as we know, obstructive sleep apnea is very often, not always, but very often associated with obstruction of the upper airway that is really in part related to obesity. And obesity happens to be, it's one of the key things that if we could target obesity, obstructive sleep apnea gets better. And this is where, you know, one of the things that we do have at Agnomi is uh, a program for GLP-1s, aka terzepatide, uh, aka Zepbound for that's indicated clinically for obese patients with a BMI greater than 30 who happen to have moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea. So everyone listening, that's why I'm bringing her on the show because none of the data that you do, it doesn't matter if it's gastric sleeve surgery, if it's GLP ones, or quite frankly, you're on Weight Watchers, right? Nothing that we do happens in a vacuum and all the best results are going to come from optimizing your nutrition and movement. You need to put those two things together plus optimizing your sleep. So Christina, with that being said, you mentioned that you're doing research in terms of protein foods that you supply and that people can purchase, but there's also other types of nutritional programs that you offer. And I think one for people who are on GLP ones and then one who are not. So if I'm remembering all of that correctly, I'm going to turn it over to you to kind of talk about what bariatrics and Ready Pro, which I believe is the food component of that, talk about that with everyone and share what, what y'all are doing over in your company. Absolutely. We're very proud of our initiative in Ready Pro. So Ready Pro really is the food lineup. And what that means to your listeners is that we have a portfolio of protein foods that they can swap into their diet or into their meal plan so that they can hit their protein targets, their fiber targets, their hydration targets, don't forget about that one, and oftentimes fill in some of those nutritional gaps that can occur if you're on a GLP-1, if you've had a surgical intervention, or if you're just eating less. So I always tell my patients, hey, when we're eating less, we need to eat better, right? Every bite matters. And our Ready Pro lineup of foods really aims to make that easy, convenient, and of course, delicious. If it doesn't taste good, forget it. I'm not eating it, I'm not selling it, I'm not promoting it, I'm not using it with my patients, so it has to taste good. So at the top sort of line of what we do, it's we manufacture great tasting protein foods that drive best outcomes for our patients. And it sounds like this would be particularly convenient for folks who just find it difficult. You know, we are always talking about optimizing whole foods. For some people, it's just difficult or they just don't have the, they just don't like to cook. Some people just hate cooking. I'm one of those. I have a husband who does the cooking, to be honest. So if that's the case, this could be a really convenient way for you to be able to supplement, as you said. Speaking of protein and fiber, and yes, you emphasize hydration, which is so important. What are the typical goals that you see? I'm, I'm curious because I've actually worked with a nurse who was doing nutrition for myself. And, you know, one of the targets for me, I'm five foot two, is like, 100 grams of protein and that can be tricky to get so i was is that a accepted and recommended even in your community i'm curious yeah, exactly that's our minimum baseline so we have registered dietitians that can support the patients who enter into our programs and that's really where we start all our conversations as it relates to protein with our patients we say let's just get you working towards hitting that 100 grams minimum target. And like you said, if you've ever really stopped to track and see how close you're, you're getting to even hitting that minimum goal, it's oftentimes pretty hard unless you're being intentional about it. And that's sort of the next thing that we layer into our conversation with patients is, okay, first let's try to aim for that target goal, that gram goal. Let's do that through being very intentional about the choices we make and let's keep it simple. There's nothing worse than what I think I used to do when I was very green in the field and I would sit down with a patient, I would map out these complex we would change breakfast lunch and dinner all of these different you know meal options for them and it was overwhelming right i wasn't like really meeting that patient where they 
or they were, right? It, it, they would walk out, I'm sure, with this new meal plan and feel completely overwhelmed. And we really have turned that on its head. We say, let's just boil it down to three simple swaps. Let's look at your day and if we can swap in three Ready Pro foods, we've already hit 50% of our 100 gram target. It's that simple. And so we aim to hit that target. We aim to make it simple. We aim to make it fun and easy. And that's how we win over our patients so that they start to develop a trust in our program and, and our in our plan. So that's where we start. And fiber, is that 20 to 25 grams? Yes, we, we do that through the combination of the fiber that we add to the foods, but we also wrap fresh foods all around those swaps that we make. So our plans or our guidance always involves a combination of the Ready Pro foods with whole fresh foods. So patients are getting their fiber from their um, leafy greens, all of their non-starchy veg, and the smallest part of that plate, which does incorporate whole grains. So we are aiming to try to get that 25, 30 grams per day. Well, I love that you're mentioning that too, because one of my observations is that people often start GLP-1s. Again, I'm mentioning that specifically because of the link with obstructive sleep apnea and the data we now have for it. And what ends up happening is if they don't actually really lean into how do I modify my life in a way that I can try to hit those targets that you're describing, fiber actually fills you up, guys. And so the GLP ones take away your appetite. Believe it or not, it's kind of hard if you're really aiming for if you're aiming to get those fiber targets, you're not really going to be hungry, it really fills you up. But even more so people who lean toward, for example, constipation as a, a side effect, I have a really great friend of mine, she has great results on a GLP one. And what she mentioned to me is she goes, Oh, if I get my fiber yeah. poops are, you know, yeah. she's all good. Her poops yeah. are good. It, we often forget that some of the reasons we have all these GI issues is because we haven't prioritized fiber. It can easily be forgotten. A hundred percent. It's definitely not always the first thing that we, we lean into. So what I always try to have quick, easy principles. I have these like one liners that I use with patients all the time. So I always say, let's be protein first, fiber forward with our nutrition choices. And the foods that we create, what's unique about them is that we use specific fibers that really help keep the gut healthy and drive that satiety that you mentioned without using fibers, which a lot of brands do use to really drive up the total number of grams of fiber on that label. So you may be wowed. You may look and say, wow, look at all the fiber on this product but it can cause a lot of GI distress, right? Hmm. And so we have done a great job with really balancing that. So we give just a nut with just the right kinds to give you that satiety without all of the GI stress, which particularly people on GLP-1s, they don't need any more potential GI stress. And so I, I, I really like leading with our foods, but also leading with fresh foods to, to kind of round it out throughout the day. 